Some of my favorite teachers are still around because I still see them on television, being interviewed, and I still read them in the stories. I am sure, kayo din, brothers and sisters, meron din kayo mga favorite teachers. And you have your own criteria about why you chose them as your favorite teachers. What makes me teacher I did plenty of research, and I will be sharing with you what God's Word is teaching us about a good teacher. For all of us in the church, the questions that we will answer with the help of God's Word are, number one, must all Christians be teachers? Number two, what makes a Christian a good teacher? And number three, who is our master teacher? Let us now answer the first question. <clears throat> Must all Christians be teachers? In the Bible, we will see two Greek verbs that express what it means to be a teacher. The first one is the Greek verb didasko, which means to give instruction. We can read this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, Romans chapter 12, verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 and 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. The second Greek verb is matetheu, which means to teach, which we can read in Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 to 20, and Acts chapter 14 verse 21. Therefore, to be a teacher simply means to give instruction and to teach. Must all Christians give instruction and teach the word of God? The answer is yes. When we talk about teaching in the informal sense, all Christians should teach and should be able to teach informally. Others call this teaching in the personal level. Let us explain teaching informally with the examples given in the word of God. When we read Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5, and 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15, Christian parents are instructed to teach their children about the word of God. Fathers are commanded to bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Mothers and grandmothers are also expected to do the same as Eunice and Lois did for young Timothy. Parents, give your precious time in teaching and instructing your children at home about God's holy word, about the gospel of our Lord Jesus, about living righteously as good Christians, and about how they will go to heaven someday if they follow Christ. When we read Titus chapter 2, verses 3 to 5, the older Christian women are commanded to instruct the younger Christian women. The older Christian women are instructed to train and admonish the younger Christian women as wives, mothers, and as good role models to other Christian women. This can be carried out by our Christian sisters at home and in other decent places in an informal way. But this can also be done in the formal way during women's Bible classes. When we read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, preachers like me, Brother Willie, Brother Brian, Brother Buddy, and the other preachers are commanded to teach others to evangelize and to train disciples. What is a disciple again, mga kapatid? A disciple is someone who responds to Jesus' call and chooses <coughs> Follow the disciple actively follows Christ and the inward transformations happen that ultimately leads the individual to become a disciple maker of others or a teacher of men. 
when we read 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2 and Titus chapter 1 verse 9, elders are commanded to teach the other Christians in the congregation. So, if we will have elders again in the future, elders are expected to teach the flock, to feed the flock, and to guard the flock against errors and false teachings. When we read Romans chapter 12, verses 6 to 7, Bible class teachers, especially those who have the gift of teaching, are commanded to teach in adult classes and also teach children. And when we read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, the Apostle Peter wrote, But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. It means that everyone in the church should teach others concerning our hope. We are to show others in our Christian life that our hope is our Lord Jesus Christ. And we should be able to provide a reason for our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, but with gentleness and respect. That if we hope in Christ to the end, we will receive eternal life. Even if we do not talk, mga kapatid, our actions and our Christian daily living teach others informally. Like what the Lord Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, You are the life of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. For example, when you go to the assembly every Sunday to worship God in spirit and in truth, even if you do not teach others verbally, your action teaches others and you are influ influencing them in a good way. Kahit nga po ang mga new converts and the young Christians, whenever they join the assembly every Sunday, and whenever they pray, whenever they read and study the Bible and follow Christ, they are already teaching others informally. Kahit sa mga tahanan, the young kuyas and ates who are Christians, who worship God every Sunday, who sing church songs at home, their younger siblings or yung mga mas nakababara nilang mga kapatid, who see their actions, learn from them informally. So, there we have it, brothers and sisters. All of us in the church must teach God's word informally. The Lord Jesus is expecting all of us to teach others. However, brothers and sisters, when we answer the question, must all Christians be Bible class teachers? The answer should be yes. It should be yes. Kaya lang, the problem is, not all Christians desire it. And not all Christians are responsible enough to teach. This pertains to teaching in the formal sense in the Bible class. The Apostle James wrote in James chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, that there is a danger in becoming a teacher because there is a stricter judgment by God for teachers. This is the reason why not many should become teachers. Some people ask that whenever they read James chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, that says, Be not many of you become teachers. And whenever they read what the Hebrew writer wrote in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, that says, For when by reason of the time ye ought to be teachers, they claim to be confused by the two scripture texts. They said it's contradicting each other. One said, Not many of us become teachers, while the other one said, We ought to be teachers. Are these scripture texts written by Apostle James and the Hebrew writer contradicting each other? The answer is no. In fact, the two passages blend and simply mean that it is a serious 
responsibility to teach the Word of God, but one that must be taken up. Apostle James was not discouraging us to become Bible teachers. Apostle James was just telling us that when we desire to teach in the formal way, in the Bible class, we must take this responsibility very seriously. The future of our church depends upon its teaching. Therefore, Apostle James was right in teaching us to be seriously responsible when we teach formally. The key words that we should remember when it comes to teaching in the formal sense are desire and responsibility. Let us now answer the next question. What makes a good Christian teacher? One of the greatest needs in most churches of Christ is to have more good, better, and less Bible teachers. This is not only on a part on a personal level or informal sense, but also in the formal sense or in the Bible class. Every Christian who is not a teacher should determine or desire to become a teacher. Let us also remember that the teacher is the key to the success of any Bible class. The future of the church depends upon its teachers. What makes a Christian a good teacher? Number one, the good teacher is faithful to Christ. By Christian, we do not just mean someone who has just been baptized. By Christian, we mean he should be all the word Christian and wise. He should be a constant follower of Christ. We can read this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 and Colossians chapter 3, verse 70. The same thing applies to all of our sisters in Christ who teaches in the women's Bible class. She should be all the word Christian and bodies, and she should be a constant follower of Christ. The life of a good Bible teacher is to be wholly dedicated to following and serving God. His speech, dress, habits, and entire department should be above reproach. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. He will, if possible, attend all the assemblies of the congregation, like what the Hebrew writer wrote in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. The good Christian teacher should be prayerful. He acknowledges the need for divine help, which we can read in John chapter 15, verse 5, and John chapter 5, verses 14 to 15. He makes prayer a regular part of his daily life. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 7. The good Christian teacher studies and meditates on God's word. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. He desires to increase his knowledge of the Bible and then applies or practices the good things he has learned from the Bible. And of course, one who is not faithful himself cannot be expected to teach faithfulness to others. No one who is careless in church attendance, who shows no interest in the lost and the backsliders, who has more time na mag-Facebook, mag-TV, mag-games, kesa magbasa at mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos, who dresses provocatively, who is addicted to drugs and other harmful substances, who is a drunkard and a smoker, who is a fornicator and adulterer, who is a gambler, who is dishonest in so many ways, who is known to be worthy, etc., needs to be in a teaching capacity. Hindi sila dapat mag-teach. Kaya nga hindi rin po assurance na porque nag-evangelism school or nag-Bible college ang isang Bible teacher ay okay na kaagad. How many times na po, mga kapatid, did Brother Willie and Brother Brian tell us about true stories of men from Bible colleges and evangelism schools who became worldly and wicked in the eyes of God? Kayo po ba, mga kapatid, gusto niyo po ba na ang Bible teacher niyo ay mukhang pera and para? Do you like a Bible teacher who steals money from church? 
Do you like a Bible teacher who creates divisions in the church, who meddles with other congregations, who fights and quarrels with other preachers and teachers about some matters, and then never applies the Word of God in forgiveness, unity, and reconciliation? Do you like a Bible teacher who cheats on his wife and is an adulterer? Do you like a Bible teacher who is a dictator? That's why I agree with Brother Willie and Brother Brian that even if somebody is a product of an evangelism school or a Bible college, it doesn't follow that he will be faithful to Christ until the end. In other words, the good Christian Bible teacher should be faithful to Christ, a good example or role model of believers before teaching in a Bible class. What makes a Christian a good teacher? Number two, the good teacher really wants to teach. One of the wrong reasons to teach is to teach because a class is trust upon them. No one would take it, so they will have to take it. To do something well, one must really want to do it. That is why the good teacher really wants to teach. He has this deep burning desire to teach. He simply loves to teach. He is full of knowledge of God's will and cannot keep from sharing it with others. Like Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 to 9, he is on fire with a zeal for God. He wants to teach God's commands no matter what and even if many people oppose God's commands. If the teacher handles his zeal for God properly, his enthusiasm in teaching will also affect his students. The good teacher will instill in his students a burning desire for greater knowledge of and greater appreciation for God's truth. Like what they say, zeal begets zeal. A good teacher begets another good teacher. What makes a Christian a good teacher? Number three, the good teacher knows and applies the discipline of teaching. The good teacher practices the discipline of teaching. The discipline of teaching is first, become a student. An example in the Bible is the young priest Ezra in Ezra chapter 7 verse 6. Ezra was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses. He started by preparing his heart in the law of Moses. Like Ezra, the good teacher becomes a student in God's word and remains a student. A good teacher never stops learning. Like the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, a good teacher never stops striving for perfection. The second discipline of teaching is he becomes a doer of God's word. Again, we will take for example Ezra in Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, who prepared his heart not only to seek God's word, but also doing it. The good teacher practices what he teaches. If a teacher fails to practice what he teaches, he will be like the Pharisees during our Lord Jesus' time, who were all hypocrites. We can read this in Matthew chapter 23, verses 2 to 3. The good teacher who practices what he teaches in God's word will reinforce the validity of what he his good influence and credibility increases in the process. And the third discipline of teaching is become a teacher. Again, we will take for example Ezra in Ezra chapter 7 verse 10, 11, and 25. And Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 1 to 9. Who having become a student of God's word first and a doer of God's word, Ezra became an expert and was given the opportunity to teach. The good teacher who knows and practices the discipline of teaching will also find a mentor. What is a mentor, mga kapatid? A mentor is someone whose example you will follow. It's like what Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. The good teacher who finds a mentor is also willing to assist, like what Timothy did for Apostle Paul. 
the good Christian who knows and applies the discipline of teaching by becoming a student of God's Word, by being a doer of God's Word, and by becoming a teacher, is a good teacher. Because the good teacher is disciplined in teaching, he is really able to teach in a formal setting, which is in a Bible class, and will continue to improve. While some Christians are gifted by God with talents that make them exceptional teachers almost from the start, others who truly desire to teach seem to struggle at first. But the fact remains that whether gifted or not, all teachers will grow and develop and will greatly benefit from the discipline of teaching. The discipline of teaching will train all teachers to excel, to communicate well, and to become good, better, and best teachers. And while it is true that greater teaching opportunity should be given to those who have greater ability, let us always remember that good teachers do not just happen because good teachers are made. The same rule of discipline din naman applies to other professions and work, di ba po? Magsisimula sa desire to learn, and then practice, 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 and then you will have mentors who will teach you, and then eventually, ikaw din, you will become a teacher, and you will become the mentor of other students, and the younger generation. Pagbigay po tayo ng examples, di ba po, sa NBA, tsaka sa BPA, may mga cases na ganyan. Sa NBA po, sino po nakakakilala kay Ben Wallace? Si Ben Wallace po, undrafted siya. Ibig sabihin, nung college, nung naglalaro siya ng basketball nung college, hindi siya pinapansin ng mga scouts. Ina-underestimate siya, hindi siya nagagalingan dun sa batch niya. So, undrafted siya sa NBA draft. Eventually, nung, nung meron kumuha sa kanyang team, he worked hard for it. He worked hard for it, and eventually, ano nangyari po, naging champion siya. Part siya ng Detroit Pistons, naging champion. Tapos nakagawa siya ng records sa NBA, four-time Defensive Player of the Year. And then, eventually, retired na kasi siya ngayon, eventually, na-elevate siya sa Basketball Hall of Fame. And he will become the first NBA player na undrafted to be elevated. O, sa PBA, meron din pong ganon. Kilala niyo po si Ato Agustin. Ato Agustin, when he was playing for college, naglalaro siya sa Lyceum. Kaya nung naglalaro siya sa PBA, hindi siya masyadong pinapansin. No? Kasi yung mga galing sa ibang schools na mga may mga regarding players, yun yung mga mas pinapansin. So what he, what he did was, he, he played hard, he worked hard. He was disciplined enough. And then he became a champion with San Miguel. Tapos naging MVP siya no, noong year 1992. And then he was included in the BPA's 25 greatest players. Sa Philippine Military Academy, sa PMA, kilala niyo po si Rodolfo Bong Biazon. Uh, siya po yung class goat ng batch nila sa PMA noong 1961. Pag sinabing class goat ka, ano ang ibig sabihin mo? Ikaw yung last sa class. Ikaw yung may pinakamababang grade sa batch mo. Kaya ikaw yung huling-huling tatawagin. So, that didn't prevent uh, Pong Biazo from achieving his goal. He worked hard, he worked hard, and then na-promote siya na na-promote. Tapos noong 1989, ano pong nangyari sa kanya? Naging hero siya sa uh, Corey administration. Bakit po? Kasi he was able to stop a coup attempt in 1989. Siya yung leader no, ng government forces. Ng mga, uh, yung group kasi na nililig niya, yung mga marines. So naging hero siya and eventually he was appointed as the AFP chief of staff. Uh, and then later, because of his credibility, because he works hard, naging senator siya na past good laws, and then ngayon, congressman naman siya. So, we can still think of many other examples for this part who were not really gifted, but were very disciplined to become successful. 
So what makes a Christian a good teacher? Number four, the good teacher works and sacrifices a lot. Teaching God's Word is a serious job. Therefore, teaching God's Word in a formal setting is not an easy task. It must be done with a lot of responsibility. Di ba ba sabi nila? Ability plus opportunity equals responsibility. In order for a Bible teacher to be successful, he must work hard and work for long hours. And even for many days, it is necessary. He must study diligently. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. The good teacher will do more than go over the lesson in a workbook. He will study all that the Bible says on the subject he is preparing to teach. He will use and study concordances, commentaries, Bible dictionaries, sermons, lectures, articles, and other studies, especially written by our brethren from the Churches of Christ. The Lord God put teachers in the church to study, work, and sacrifice. If one is going to be a good teacher, he must sacrifice such things as time, money, recreation, etc. A lot of sacrifice is given by the good teacher for preparation of a Bible study and lesson. Well-prepared and well-presented lessons take time, energy, money, and a lot of sacrifice. A good teacher needs time not only for study but also for meditation and prayer. Ganyan din po sa preaching. Good preaching is a combination of study, work, sacrifice, meditation, and prayers. What makes a Christian a good teacher? Number five, the good teacher teaches the truth in God's word. The Lord Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 30, Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The good teacher diligently studies the word of God, therefore knowing the truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. By diligently studying God's word, the good teacher has both a general knowledge and a specific knowledge about it. The good teacher does a lot of research. The good teacher will stick to what the Bible says. He will not speak with traditions and opinions of men, and to such things which the Bible did not say nor reveal. The good teacher will regard the Bible as the authoritative word of God. Therefore, teaching the truth of the Bible will never compromise with traditions and opinions of men. And read that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 2 and 4. What else makes a Christian, a good teacher. Number six, the good teacher is dependable. Being absent, or yung tinatawag na absenteeism, and being habitually late for Bible classes are not the qualities of a good teacher. Some teachers do even worse things for a Bible class. Some teachers will agree to teach a Bible class and then they will either be absent or make excuses not to teach on the day they agree to teach. Some teachers also fail to communicate with other Christians and fail to get substitutes to replace them on their spiritual Bible teaching. This also happens in preaching. Some preachers are guilty of the same practice. They will agree to be the guest speaker or scheduled speaker for a certain congregation but they will not come pala on the day when they will speak the Lord's message. Tapos, they will not even text or call me to inform the congregation about why they didn't come. Some preachers need to communicate to other Christians, especially when they cannot make it to be the speaker. It should be done many days before the delivery of sermon, especially kung alam na niya na he cannot make it due to to inevitable circumstances so that the congregation that scheduled or invited the preacher will adjust well and look for a replacement who can also prepare well to deliver the message. A good teacher will avoid endangering the souls of other Christians, especially those who rely on him. A good teacher is dependable. 
The Apostle Paul wrote it well in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 about good and dependable teachers of God's Word. He wrote, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always keep yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor, labor in the Lord is not in vain. <coughs> what else makes a Christian a good teacher? Number seven, a good teacher is emotionally stable and gets along with others. An emotionally stable teacher is someone who is confident and firm, yet virtuous or magalang, kind and considerate. An emotionally stable teacher is patient, calm, self-controlled, and not easily upset and not easily angered. He is patient in dealing with the mistakes of his students for he remembers the mistakes of his own past. An emotionally stable teacher ought to be happy and cheerful, not pessimistic, not grouchy, not moody, and not arrogant. Even if he is tired or quite sick, he will still show emotional stability. An emotionally stable teacher is humble, compassionate, and shows Christian love. One who is ill-tempered, lacking in understanding, impatient, explosive, selfish, overbearing, vengeful, and proud, can do more harm in attempting to teach than if he or she had simply refrained. The emotionally unstable person should not be allowed to teach. A good teacher will love his fellow man and value the soul above all. Therefore, the good teacher loves others as himself and regards others before self. We can read this in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. A good teacher is able to get along with others. Otherwise, he will find it difficult to properly teach others he does not like or disagree with. So we have already answered the question, what makes a Christian a good teacher? We will now answer the last question. Who is our master teacher? Who is our master teacher, Mama? The answer is, the Lord Jesus Christ is our master teacher. The Bible demonstrates that our Lord Jesus is the master teacher to whom we should go for instruction, which instruction should mold our lives. There is no one else to whom we can learn who is a more able teacher Jesus Christ. Under the Old Testament, God was man's teacher. God taught Moses. God likewise promised to teach mankind under the New Testament. We can read that in Isaiah chapter 2 verses 2. That is why when the Lord Jesus came to earth in the flesh, he was the master teacher. And the primary feature of Jesus' short names to your here on earth was teaching. Why is the Lord Jesus our master teacher? Number one, the Lord Jesus is the master teacher because he taught in a different but very effective way. The Lord Jesus frequently used circumstances and figurative language in his parables with which his audiences were familiar. He taught them his spiritual truths about which they knew little or nothing. Jesus taught more than lessons he instructed different people, especially those who were discriminated by society. Examples of the people whom the master the teacher Jesus taught were Nicodemus, Peter, the Samaritan woman, Zacchaeus, the woman of Syrophoenicia, and many, many others. Number two, the Lord Jesus is the master teacher because he placed great emphasis on the scriptures. Because the Lord Jesus placed great emphasis on the scriptures, he spoke with authority. Number three, the Lord Jesus is the master teacher because he always taught what people needed to hear. The Lord Jesus taught people in their everyday situation and connected the impact of the scriptures on everyday life. That was one of the reasons why many people gladly heard of the Lord Jesus. His way of connecting the scriptures in everyday life separated his teachings from the hypocrites, Pharisees' teachings. 
Number four, the Lord Jesus is the master teacher because he practiced what he preached. He is the master teacher and a model on the planet because he personified the word of God. He modeled what he taught. Because the Lord Jesus is sinless, he is our model for everything, including obedience to God. When the Lord Jesus taught, he modeled a behavior that can be imitated. Kaya naman, when Apostle Paul became a teacher of God's word, he considered himself a role model for his converts. We can read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. The Apostle Paul also praised his Thessalonian converts for having become imitators of their teachers and the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. Number five, the Lord Jesus is the master teacher because he demonstrated his deity. The Lord Jesus, who is our master teacher, is truly man and truly God. He demonstrated his deity when none of his enemies were able to triumph over him in their verbal confrontations with him. As various groups of Jewish leaders tried their best to discredit him in the eyes of the people, the Lord Jesus, our master teacher, silenced them one by one. The Lord Jesus refuted and condemned those who attacked God's word. Unlike every other teacher, not only does his teaching still live, but the master teacher lives. The word of many teachers have long been forgotten, but the words of the master teacher, Jesus Christ, will live forever. And number six, the Lord Jesus is the master teacher because of his profound and lasting effect on humanity. To think that the Lord Jesus ministry only lasted for three years, to think that he never wrote a book, he had no university chair, no he did not travel extensively, and yet through the men he taught and trained, through the people he caused to reform and repent and to submit to the will of God, the Lord Jesus impacted the world like no other nature. His divinity was clearly reflected in his teachings. So for our conclusion, brothers and sisters, all faithful Christians should teach and should be able to teach in a personal level or the informal way. Even if we do not speak, our actions and our daily living teach others informally. Let our light shine before others that they may see our good deeds and praise our Father in heaven. However, not all Christians can teach in the formal sense or in a Bible class because not all Christians desire to teach and not all Christians are responsible enough to teach. Pero, dapat, all Christians should desire to teach and be responsible enough to teach. While others are gifted in teaching, like what the Apostle Paul wrote, na ang dali-dali lang sa kanila ang magturo. It doesn't mean na others who are not gifted should not teach anymore. The Apostle Paul also said, we should strive to become the best for Christ. So if a Christian truly desires to teach and is responsible enough to teach, he can teach and he will definitely improve as he keeps teaching with discipline. The Apostle James was not discouraging us to become teachers when he wrote James chapter 3 verses 1 to 2. Apostle James was just telling us that when we desire to teach in the Bible class, we must take this responsibility seriously because God has a stricter judgment for teachers. James chapter 3 verses 1 to 2 and Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 are not contradicting each other but they blend. They simply mean that it is a serious responsibility to teach the word of God but one that must be taken up. The factors that will make a Christian a good Bible teacher are as follows. Number one, the good teacher is faithful to Christ. Number two, the good teacher really wants to teach. Number three, the
the good teacher knows and applies the discipline of teaching. The discipline of teaching is first, become a student. Second, become a doer of God's word. And third, become a teacher. Number four, the good teacher works and sacrifices a lot. Number five, the good teacher teaches the truth in God's word. Number six, the good teacher is dependable. And number seven, the good teacher is emotionally stable and gets along with others. The Lord Jesus is our master teacher to whom we should go for instruction, which instruction should mold our lives. The Lord Jesus is our master teacher because number one, he taught in a different but very effective way. Number two, he placed great emphasis on the scriptures. Number three, he always taught what people needed to hear. Number four, he practiced what he preached. Number five, he demonstrated his deity. And number six, his profound and lasting effect on humanity is evident. Brothers and sisters, our master teacher, the Lord Jesus, taught us to be teachers. The Lord Jesus purposed to teach his disciples so they in turn could teach others. He told his disciples he would make them fishers of men. We can read that in Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 20. Two of the three divinely given missions of the Lord's Church involved teaching. It is one of the reasons why God placed teachers in the Lord's Church. Evangelizing the world involves teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost. We can read that in Matthew chapter 20, verses 19 to 20. Edification or building up the church in the Holy Faith involves teaching. We can read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 12 and 26. Which is why every Christian should be responsible to learn God's word thoroughly enough that we can instruct others in it. We can learn to be successful teachers by imitating the teaching methods and subject, ma subject materials of our master teacher, the Lord Jesus. The method and message of our Lord Jesus, the master teacher, and his inspired followers should be ours. Let us become the good, better, and best teachers who are placed by our master teacher in this church. So to all of our loved ones, friends, guests, and viewers in the internet, the Lord Jesus, who is our master teacher, is teaching you to hear his gospel. The gospel is the Lord Jesus died on the cross for our sins, then he was buried and was raised on the third day. All you have to do next is to believe and have faith in our Master Teacher, the Lord Jesus. Repent of your sins. Confess the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And be baptized or immersed for the remission of sin. Then the Master Teacher will add you to His Church. Be faithful to the Master Teacher until the end to receive 